Yes, welcome to Killborn 5. Okay, so we're gonna go into part three of uh, fixing these furnaces here. So in the first two uh, videos, we went over the uh, diagnosis in a roundabout way, and we went over all the components and that that are within the furnace. So now we're gonna take all of that information and we are going to apply it to uh, to these furnaces and I'm going to show you how as each part fails how you get things apart and how you get them in and out and that so I have a couple of furnaces here in front of me I have an older style and a newer style Atwood or Dometic whatever you want to call it now so all right let's uh, get started all right so as you can see in front of me here I have a Atwood 8535 and then I have one of the new ones right here, it's an AFMD 30121, so AFMD is just Atwood Furnace Medium, it's nothing, uh, nothing fancy for the acronym, but this is on this particular, on this model here, you'll see a big white exterior uh, cover or black whichever so it'll have the exterior cover on it and you can take that off and access all of this and this particular style right here all you're gonna see is this right here this exhaust on the outside so you would have to go into the unit and you would have to pull this furnace backwards and out to be able to get at your squirrel wheel your motor your board and all that kind of stuff they do have this model as well that has the big rectangular door on it as well just like this one here and it's all much the same so everything that I'm going to show you is going to uh, apply and uh, one thing to remember when you are bench testing any of these make sure you put the exhaust back on with it running or else it will start to backfire because without this in there it shoots the flue gas out and it gets sucked back in to the combustion wheel there and it starves it out and it just won't run it won't light or it won't stay lit and then sometimes it'll start to backfire and that's so, but we'll put that back in there for now until we're, until we get to it okay so we'll start on this one over here oh and uh what I said in one of my previous videos about yellow always being ground. On the new ones they have changed it. Black is ground, red is positive, okay, and then you got your blues for your thermostat. On your older one here, you can't really see it back in there, but you got you're gonna have yellow, red, and blue. Yellow being ground, red being your positive and then your blues being your thermostat wires. And then this just has a little plug on the outside that you clip in. Okay, so now what, what we're going to do here to start off with is we will quickly, uh, well, let's get the board out. So when you're gonna check the board, you see a little wing nut right up here. So you back that nut, wing nut off, you don't have to take it right off. Just enough to get it past the plastic shroud. And you can pull that up there. There you go. And usually you can weasel that out. You can get it out enough that you can get it up, up out of the way. There you have it. it doesn't put too much strain on the wires so if you were replacing the board so what you would do is you would get it like this okay, and then we're gonna pull this connector out just gonna put you down okay so this connector comes off of this rail of pins hey okay. And then on here, 
we have our power wire and we have our fan our fan or our blower motor wire so you take those two off and then this is our igniter igniter flame sensor here so pull that one off pull that one off and we can pull this one off and then we have the board Okay, and then what you would do is these little tabs here, as you can see right here, you'd pinch those, just pinch those with a pair of pliers, and the board would pop right. Let's get that in focus. And the board will pop right off once you pinch them. So, I can get away, I usually get away with using the, using my pocket knife. So you pinch, and lift. See it pops right off there and then you'll take and snap the new board back on. If, if you were using a fan 50 plus, a dinosaur board fan 50 plus on this particular unit, you can get away with it. What I do is right through here. So what I do is I cut these plastic tabs off flush because a fan 50 plus has uh, metal has its own metal standoffs on the board which stand off and then what I do is I either use um, machine screws or what I have been using is I've been using uh, rivets and I'll just rivet it to plate here but then once you do that you can't use a genuine board anymore don't try and cut the metal grommets out of the fan 50 plus it's better to wreck this than it is to wreck the board so that's what I would recommend I put fan 50 plus in these at Atwoods all the time uh, I'm a big fan of the dinosaur board I, I think they do a, a really nice job on their furnace boards so. So there, there the board is out of it now. Okay, so if you had to uh, check, the one thing you would check is you would check to see if your switch, if this is tripped or whatever. It's just a 15 amp reset. You turn it off, turn it back on. Okay. The next thing you would check for is you would get your voltmeter and you would uh, turn your turn your thermostat on or twist your thermostat wires together so as we have thermostat wires here you would take these two blue wires strip the end this is if you're bench testing and you would twist these together and that would uh, then create the signal the continuity to fire up and then you should have your power is coming in on this pin here and power should be coming out on here so that's what you would do is you would check for power coming out here so you would ground ground to the case because this is where ground will be with the board being in the unit and then you would put your positive lead on here and then your positive lead you're going to check for power here so if you're uh, but there is a, a bit of a caveat on that at times there you'll test here for power and you'll have power coming out of your board and even if you took your board into a dealer and they test it and they said the they put it on their tester and it tests good what happens a lot of the time is this little relay right here it uh, with the amperage of the motor drawing on it the contacts close but they don't uh, as soon as you put amperage on them they they're not closed all the way and they arc out and it pops open and then your blower motor stops running so yes it'll test for power here but you still what I like to do is leave the fan connected when I do it 
and just slide it down over top and then you'll see on your meter when that gets twisted together you'll see if it's sending power out or not so and then the next thing is, is your igniter your igniter here and you'll hear that clicking away when it goes to try and light so your igniter is so we're going to remove the exhaust to so on these atwoods to remove the exhaust you do this loosen off okay now that's loose okay just going to put that down on the ground there so your igniter is that white ceramic I'm wiggling the wire on it here let's see if I can get a better shot of it so that white ceramic back in there just you got the yellow wire that's going low and the yellow wire going high well right in between it is your is your electrode and that's your flame sense and your igniter right there and you see there's that one quarter inch screw quarter inch nut right there that you take out and then there is another one tucked in that you can get at just in between the solenoid valve and the gap on the gas valve right here so right in this little pocket right here and you can just vaguely see it so that's how you'll take those two screws out so you need a long extension and a quarter inch nut driver and we're going to get to that here and then of course your gas line would be coming in and across here so on this particular model to get the uh, burner and everything out of it is fairly easy so we don't have a big gas line like on this one right here where it's a fixed oh, I guess I should focus on what we're doing a fixed gas line coming up and over top and it's a, a bit of a bigger job to uh, to make that happen so when you're doing that I'll have to take this one all apart we'll get to that one eventually okay so just give me a second here and I'm gonna get set up and then we'll start taking this, we'll start taking pieces off of this so you can see what you need to do. Okay, so we're back again. So I set up on my drill. I have these extensions right here. And then I use these magnetic nut drivers, which makes things a lot easier. Okay. So on here, if we're just, uh, say your blower wheel in here is broken or cracked whichever okay or you need to get at the sail switch which is in this which is inside this cover right here so what you're going to do is you're going to go to that quarter inch right there we're going to take that one out quarter inch one take it out so it's right there oh. trying to do this by myself today so and then we have another quarter inch up top here on the opposite side careful and get the whole thing out like that so you pull it from the bottom out lifting it up over top of the lip in here there's a lip with this on because this is just like it would be in the unit you wouldn't be taking the furnace out you'd leave this plastic ring on pull the bottom out kind of bend it up 
and then there you go. There's your sail switch. So then on your sail switch, you would pull these wires off first. These ones right here. And then you would remove these little Phillips, these Phillips screws. And the sail switch will come off. You put your new sail switch on. And hook the wires back up. Okay. So we're going to push that up there. Out of all the junk in my garage there. Okay, so there's our blower wheel. Okay, so I'm going to go get a pair of pliers and we're going to pull that blower wheel out for you so that you can see. Okay, so I got a pair of pliers here and I now I have a helper for the camera, so hopefully this will go a little bit better. So you guys aren't getting so sick with the uh, me moving around. So I have these pair of bent needle nose here. And you go inside. And you grab this little, this little red spring tab in here. There's a tab top and bottom. You go in there and you grab a hole, pinch that. And you take it off. Okay, then that's off, so you'll just set that off to the side. Now your blower wheel, right here. You don't need to take the fan shroud off to get it out of there. It does make it easier. And you just wiggle it, and off it comes. So, take it out through the front here. Okay, so there's your blower wheel. Now when you do get a new one, you're still going to notice that there's going to be a little chunk out of it here and that little chunk that's out of there is for balancing the fan so it's not damaged there's nothing wrong with it it's just there for the balancing of it okay so now the next thing is is you always want to put this the long snout right here where that ring goes around is always the part that goes out and then you'll also notice in here that there's a flat spot on the shaft so you have to make sure that on this fan, on this squirrel wheel, that you see you got a round, it's kind of a half moon, and then you got a flat spot. So you got to line that up with that inside of there. Okay. So there. That's our blower wheel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to take our screws out of here so we don't lose them. I already dropped one. I'm going to start keeping everything up on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to completely dismantle this furnace. And then we're going to put it all back together. So you have your high tension wire right here. Which goes through to your igniter. We don't need to take that off. And then we have our leads for our gas valve here. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to... Since we our gas line is off already... We're going to take this gas valve right out of there with the igniter and everything all attached. So to do that, you'll remove this. Okay, so that's one. Then you will look back in here and you will see this other one right there. Can you see the back in there now? just a bit so there's there's what we're going for right there there's a little quarter inch screw down there so we take that one out okay and then you have two and you have one more here and then you have one more right up top there So there you go, four, four screws in total, and then you can grab this whole thing, and it starts to come out. So we are going to have to remove that high tension wire. So this is where these bent needle nose come in handy again. Go up on top of that igniter, 
and that comes off and then we just gotta separate these two here. so that is the power wire to your gas valve and the grounding is done through the fact that it attaches to the metal case which i'll show you i'll show you here once we have this out there it's a little bit tight getting it out from in between with this plastic on here but it does fit and then when we go to put it back in it'll be a bit of a tight fit but it'll still still fit so as i said before you can see here where they have grounded to the actual body of the unit so where these make contact that creates a ground through it so all you have is the one power wire and then you got your two two solenoids down here so <clears throat> there is your burner so you'd want to make sure that this burner here you take a wire brush and you scrub it all completely clean and blow it out make sure there's nothing on there and then here's your igniter the igniter on this one looks good but if you were going to replace it as I said before you don't have to remove all of this to get this out if you want to get your igniter out you would sneak in between here and then you can get right at and you can remove that one and then you get at your bottom one here and here you go there's your igniter so we'll just set that up there for now so we can put this back together after. My helper's taking you for a ride. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so now we've removed the burner, we've removed the gas valve, we've pulled the exhaust out, we've taken the squirrel wheel off, we've taken the front, front housing off. The only, now what we're gonna do is we're going to pull this blower motor out of here right. so what I do when I'm about to do that is I cut all these little zip ties that they have tying up all the wire okay so there we have it so now what we want is we want our blower motor wires, okay? So remember we said that red was power. So the red one was attached to the board, so it's already free. Then we have a black one here, which is just inside of here. Come around this way, please. So then we have this right here. There's our black wire. That's our ground. So we're gonna pull that one up, okay? So there. Now everything is free. Gonna need a different size nut driver. Gonna have a 5 16 nut driver. Now, as long as this clamp that's in here, so you see this, it's just a gear clamp they have sitting here. It pinches all these plastic fingers around this motor. As long as it's it off. And then when I tighten it, when I go to tighten this, this back up, I try to make sure that it's forward so that you can get on it easy and you don't have to worry about stripping it out. So, now before the next thing, before we can pull this out of here, you'll see in here, this combustion wheel right here, there's a little set screw in here, a little Allen key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Allen keys and we're going to break that loose. But you come through here and into there and you can break that free so I'll be right back okay so I'm back here so we have our 1 8 Allen key now now if you have a long enough one you come through get out of the way here so you can see you come through like this and into it right there and then you loosen that off so you have to reset it a couple of times but this one looks like it's already loose so then you pull it off now the one thing you're going to encounter 
as you're gonna see you see all that rust and build up in there okay so you'll see all that rust and that in there now you're not necessarily gonna have a right angle sanding tool like this so any type of sandpaper or whatever will do to get in there and just clean it off a bit too far back for me to sand it off even so we'll just take our knife and we will scrape the excess off Almost. That's the thing on an older furnace, you're always going to encounter little pitfalls like this. And a little chunk of emery cloth would do us wonders right now, but. I'm not going to run back out to the trailer for a little piece of emery. Let's just make sure our set screw isn't biting just a little bit. It will come off. I think our, I think our set screw is binding a little bit on us. We can just leverage that just a little bit. You gotta be careful prying in there. And there you go. So, not the easiest time to get it out of there, but so that's our combustion wheel. Okay, so now we'll take that and of course you got to pay attention again flat spot on the shaft in here and we'll clean this up really good once we get it out and the set screw has to go on the flat spot so put that down there and now our motor is loose so now what you will do is you'll take this hose this gear clamp you'll put it up there and you'll wiggle this back and forth until it comes out so now tucked in there is this little metal bracket and that is a stabilizer in there that you have to put back in with it and then what you will also find in there is this rubber rubber backing and it goes in like that and this is just another thing take up some of the vibration and that with the motor sitting there so it's not just against the plastic or to make a whole bunch of noise so we'll take those and we'll put those up on top of the furnace too. So there we go. There's our motor. So now, well, we got it out.
Now, I know this motor is good, so that's why I'm doing that. If you were replacing this, you wouldn't bother doing that. You would just throw the motor away, and you would put in, put in a new one, and you don't have to worry about the rust that's on there. But I know this motor is good, so I'm not going to throw it away. I'm just going to put it back in the way it is with the rust cleaned off of it so that if I have to take that off again, hopefully I won't have the same problems. Okay, so we have just about covered everything in dismantling this furnace. So now if we get, take a peek back down inside here. So here is our heat exchangers. Okay, and then this is our limit switch right here, our high limit. So the high limit switch, again, quarter inch nut driver, I hit for myself here and we're going to go back in here and we're going to take this quarter inch there we go so there's our little quarter inch screw put it up there and take this and there is our high limit switch right there which is held on by a little tiny robertson screw tucked underneath this little metal tab over on this side here so you would take this out lift it up and out pull the top and bottom wire off slide your new limit switch in there put the screw back in hook up your wires and then and then you would flip this back up and i always try to use the markings on the bracket I always try to use the markings on the bracket itself back here. As you can see in there, there's little markings on the bracket. Score marks from where the screw was and I try to line them back up again so that the height of the limit switch is in the same spot. So that's your high limit. On these Atwoods, 